Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about ASP.NET Web App API Request Validation. Separating validation logic using model binding custom attributes. Validating data is one of the most frequent and everyday activities in software development. Even though front-end validation is present in almost all applications, back-end validation is mandatory since most of the time we can disable it on the front-end. One of the effects of backend validation is to have lots of duplicated code for validation in the application. But luckily, we can take advantage of the combination of ASV.NET model binding and action filter to centralize and reuse the application validation logic. So let's get started. So today's agenda is to, number one, we will talk about first approach, second, data annotations, third, model binding validation, fourth, action filters, and fifth, custom attributes. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just three months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. So starting with first approach. A very common scenario is to use the controller's layer to validate the code. Most people do that to avoid spending resources and calling methods if we still have invalid fields. So let's create a simple validation approach. This the simple person class has purposely a few properties just to test how we can validate them. This validation approach of person controller class works, but there are a few problems we can highlight. We are not returning to the client validation problems. There's a big chance of duplicating the validation code in other methods. There is no separation of concerns. The error will be reported one by one to the caller and not at the same time. Of course, we can change the code to use a shared utils class to validate or create a validation list and add the errors to this list. But this will not solve all the errors with this new approach. Instead, we can use what ASP.NET already provide us. So number two is data annotations. Uh, ASP.NET provides a set of classes that we can use to decorate properties and classes with these classes under the system.componentmodel.data annotations namespace and are simple classes that inherit from the validation attribute abstract class. Even though you can create custom classes and inherit from validation attribute, there is a plenty of built-in classes that will solve a big part of validation logic such as required attribute, max length attribute, range attribute, email attribute, credit card attribute, and many many others. Applying these attributes is very easy after applying them to our person would be look like this. The basic validation will be enough for now. Notice that we can multiple annotations for our single property the next step will be validating the class once the data it will be provided by the caller and we can do that using ASP.NET model binding validation. So moving on towards model binding validation. ASP.NET binds the information sent in the request body to the actions parameter and we have access to this information through the controller's model state object which has is valid property that as name suggests returns if the model is valid or not. If the validation fails, all the errors will be kept in the model state object and they can be returned by the caller in a bad request action result, which also returns a 400 status code. Changing the code in personal controller to validate using model state will look like this. Now, if I post a person by using below curl not providing valid properties, I will see the result like this. This is way better, isn't it? 
use data annotations and model binding, I can replace all the dirty validation logic in the controllers for a clean and separated validation logic directly on the application models. But on the other hand, when working with multiple actions via duplication the model binding for all actions, it would be great if we can reuse this piece of validation code. But unfortunately, we can do this using action filters. So what are action filters? ASP.NET action filters are one type of filter provided by ASP.NET they, and they are the piece of code that will always run before and after each request in the application. To create an action filter, we just need to create a new class, implement the iActionFilter interface which allow us to implement the methods on action executing and on action executed. So moving the validation code from the controllers to the on executing will have the same effect. Before executing the application, we just need to include the action filter in the pipeline call uh, in our program.cs. file. By doing this, we solve one more issue and clean all validation code from all controllers, which is awesome. But what if we have a very complicated validation logic and the current data annotations are not enough for my project? For sure, there is a very common need and most of us already have the requirement in our project, which brings us the initial approach, create a class with a custom validation code and use it across the application. As an example, imagine that we need to run a lot of check against the wet person's number provided by the client, such as checking if the code is valid against a database or checking if the wet is forbidden, denied or whatever. Luckily, we can use our custom approach and extend the behavior to customize all validations logic and even use an existing validation library to help. So the last thing is custom attributes. As I mentioned before, the classes from the data annotation namespace inherit from validation attribute. So create a custom attribute, we just need to create a new class inherit from validation attribute. Override the is valid property and write a custom validation code. There is an example here. In this custom logic, I am just checking if the VAT contains a number 111 but in this class we can do all the checking that we need and we can use this validation exactly how we already use all from data annotation namespace providing a wet with 1111 in the middle as in the request which is here will return the results this. Using this approach, we will improve the separation of concern and reusability of your components since the validation logic will be kept in a specific class that can be used as attributes in any property across all models and if the VAT validation logic changes, it can be applied to all components that use the attribute with only one change. I think this is the great validation approach. Of course, it could customize as you wish. You don't need to follow it 100% as explained here since it opens lots of additional options and way of use. Final considerations. Code duplication is bad and mixing business logic with validation logic is also bad. We can use ASP.NET built-in features to help to solve these issues. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. If you wanted to win a free tuition, then go towards our website called startuphack.com start-now and click here to win free tuition. Thank you.